Hey guys, I'm Jose from Traveling with Jose, and this is Just Yoon from Just Yoon. <laughs> so right now we're just gonna actually go through some questions that we have. We really want to do like a nonchalant form of Q and A, kind of just answering questions with each other with you guys. Uh, yeah, and if you like this, leave a comment in the section below. If you have any more questions that we can answer later on, let us know. All right, let's start. All right, so do you have to give up your dreams to join the military? No. Definitely not. You don't have to give up your dreams. You can do <clears throat> pursue your hobbies while you're in the military. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I went to boot camp, I was going with somebody with this girl. And, you know, one, you know, we all added each other on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Did you ever do that? Like, but when I finished boot camp, uh, at the end, you're not technically allowed to exchange contact information, but yeah. we kind of did. Uh -huh. And so we made this Facebook page. Uh, two five one two five two. Okay, all right, and then yeah, we we, we try to find as much people as we can, and we put it all together. And you know, she commented a message there. She's like, you know, every day I'm getting older, and I'm giving up on my dream of being a model. And I was, and I just, you know, just nonchalantly went in there. I was like, go on Instagram. You can do both. Be in the military and pursue your career. I've seen actually a lot of girls on Instagram. <clears throat> They're in the military. Mostly Marine girls, they're, you know, smoking hot. They're still in the Marines, but they're, like, over 100,000 whatever yeah. followers or, yeah, yeah subscribers. So, on yeah, YouTube, it too. Crazy. On YouTube, they're big as well. So, yeah, you can definitely pursue whatever passion you have. I know of people that um, have pursued their passion in music just by actually learning more. And then once they get out there, uh, they perform. That's what it is. A lot of, I have a lot of friends that perform, like, on the ship when we have talent shows. Yep. Or, um... Yeah, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I did, but yeah. You, you performed something else, right? Yeah, I, I was breakdancing for my talent shows. I failed. I lost. But one of the girls, she's a, she's a poet, and she was doing poetry, and she was really good. And uh, she could have won the whole thing, but a little bit of a favoritism playing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fine. It happens. Yeah. <clears throat> happens a lot in the military. Should we say that? Yeah, favoritism. Yeah. Yeah. We could leave it there. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, is it embarrassing to be in the military? Hmm. Yes, it is. It's actually, um, at least personally for me, a lot of times when I was in Japan, it was kind of embarrassing being in the military just because there would be incidents that would happen involving military members, Navy, and I would get a bad rap for it. My friends who are Japanese would watch news and be like, hey, what's going on? Like, why are your people doing this? And I'm like, well, they're not really my people. It just so happens we're in the same organization. Yeah. So that was kind of embarrassing to me. Uh, here in America, um, here in America, not so much. But that was just my experience. I mean, I remember there was this incident when I was uh, deployed that no Navy sailors could leave the base and they couldn't buy alcohol. Yeah. And all the Japanese people knew about it because it was broadcasted on live television. So I was like, wow, that's really embarrassing. I'm kind of glad I'm not there right now, but... I still got some of the rap. I had my friend message me and like, hey, you want to know what I saw on TV? And I was like, let me guess, because I already knew what was going on. Yeah. So that's In that case, yeah, it was embarrassing. How often are the alcohol bans? <laughs> the alcohol bans. Um, <clears throat> Is there a curfew? Like, you can't drink alcohol past a certain time? Uh, Yeah. So if you are, there is, yeah, I know. That's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, there's curfew. Yeah. There's, there's a curfew that you have to be back on base by a certain <clears throat> time. If you're by yourself, you have to be back on base by 10 p.m. If you have a group of people, you have to be back on base by, I believe it's 12 o'clock. So that's one curfew. The curfew on drinking, not so much a curfew, but they recommend uh, not drinking so much. Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna be by yourself, and if you are with others to always watch over each other. So that's kind of like, it's not a curfew, but it's kind of annoying. Yeah, um, one thing that my ship makes us do is every weekend where it's like a three-day weekend or like it's a payday weekend, mm -hmm. they make us fill out this co thing called like Liberty Plan. Oh, like, I, I know all oh, about yeah. Liberty Plans. Yeah, they, they want us to write exactly what we're going to do. Like, you know, I'll have to write, I am going to yeah. the gym. I am going to be on the ship. I am... I'm going to go home and do nothing. Yeah. Yeah, you have to... Even though you're not doing anything, you have to write that down. And it says, like, do you drink? Do you not drink? Who's your designated driver? You know, what app are you going to use? The crazy uh, thing is, are you still doing it now? Yeah. 
Every day? Or for like every week, I mean? Not every week, but like three oh, days, yeah. Okay, you said when you got paid. Yeah. Okay, because I thought that was the only thing that they do overseas. Just because they have to keep us on a tighter leash overseas. I didn't know they did that here in America. I've never done it on my aircraft carrier. I'm on one aircraft carrier. He happens to be on another one, if you guys didn't know. So, I want to go on to the next question. No, I got... Or uh, do you have something yeah, else to add? Okay. Yeah, I mean, w when I first joined the military, right, mm -hmm. I thought it was embarrassing okay. to join the military. Because I, I personally uh, I see, I thought, yeah, yeah. like... It was like, oh, I couldn't make it out in the real world, so I'm going to the military. And, real world, yeah. Yeah. So for the first, I'm not going to lie, for the first year, I was a little bit embarrassed. But, you know, now it's like, I personally think it was like the best thing that I could have done. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, you know, I'm not out there saying like, hey, I'm in the you know Navy and like wearing my uniforms out and everywhere and, yeah. you know, bragging about it. No, I don't do not, nothing like that. Some people do. Yeah, uh, one, one, one thing that my friend does when he, whenever he goes to uh, back home, he has to drive like five hours up. Uh -huh. He'll wear his uniform back up. You know, my friend would go, would wear his uniform, and drive. You know, five six hours up to where he lives. And his logic, I don't know how well or effective it is, uh -huh. but in Virginia, you know, there's so many military that you know the police will pull over the military, you know, nonstop. But his logic was. If he drives up in states where there isn't a lot of military, they appreciate the military, so they'll let him go scot free. Okay. That that was his logic. I, I think it makes sense. I but I think it makes sense. Actually yeah. on I just went home this past weekend, didn't change out of my uniform. Uh, but when I was in the car, I did take off um, the top part of my uniform, so I put it on my seat next to me, and I made sure it was like. You know, with my name out and everything, just in case I got stopped where the police officer would see that. So, yeah. I get it. I, what, I, I would do it. What? Do you ever get the occasion where people come up to you and be like, hey, thank you for your service? Yeah, I do. And, you know, at first for me, I was like, uh, uh... You don't know what to say. Yeah, but now it's like, okay, you're welcome. Because, you know, now I kind of understand the role that I play in the Navy in the big picture and in the things that I have to sacrifice. Mm. And so what's your... So, um, I learned it at the very beginning actually because right after um, A school, right, you know, you're in uniform a lot when you go out, <clears throat> I learned like what to say and I would say, thank you for your support. That's what I always say, thank you for your support. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely, definitely do that. Yeah. And like I try not to get into it. It's like just you know, because me joining is my decision. You thanking me for that decision kind of feels awkward. Yeah. But no, thanks for the support. Thank you guys for the support too. You know, I know I get a lot of uh, comments on Instagram and on YouTube saying thanks for this your service. Well, thank you for support. Keep on watching our channels, and that's that's another way you can support us. Yeah. Maybe that's what I should start doing. Yeah. Thank thanks. Thank you for your support. Yeah. I haven't really thought about. I, I always just say you're welcome. And it's like yeah, a one-ended thing. Yeah, it's a one-ended thing. So yeah. like when it's thank you for your support, like it's um it's a mutual understanding yeah. on both sides. I feel. Yeah. So what do you love about being in the military? What do I love about the, okay, <clears throat> so um, more so towards the beginning, uh, I love being able to meet so many people, so many new people, and um, extrovert. No, that's the no. thing. I'm not. I'm not an extrovert. I would say I'm an introvert. I'm really shy in in real life. Not on, not on camera. I don't know. But uh, meeting all these new people, I could learn from, let's say, their past, what they've experienced. Because I knew I kind of lived in a bubble. And I like to tell people this. Like, <sighs> I lived in a bubble where, I mean, I had a, a decent upbringing. I was living in the suburbs. Uh, I didn't have to go through a lot of strife in my life. And um, the, o the only time I did experience, um, let's say, bad things was when I would go uh, over to where my dad's from, El Salvador, and see the conditions that people live in. So uh, that kind of showed me, uh, let's say, the value of a dollar and certain yeah. things. But um, I definitely love that I can see different lives and see different people 
uh, in a whole different setting and I can grow. That's another thing that I love. I, I got to grow in the military. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to like, you know, meeting people, uh, you know, being in the military, like I know so many people from Africa and in like places yeah. like uh, Ivory Coast, uh, you know, Togo and, you know, a bunch of different countries that I can't name. And they'll be like, they'll be speaking in, you know, their native tongue. And I'll be like, you know, what language is that? They'll be like French. I was like, what? They speak French? Too? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, that sounds, in my opinion, nothing like French. They'll be like, no, it's French. And, you know, it's crazy. But, you know, you get to learn so many different things and how they came into the military and it just kind of puts you into perspective um you know in, in many different ways like you know how lucky you had it and um all the you know the struggles that they had to go through uh so yeah um another thing traveling but you know, this is more so more so for me always um i've got to travel a lot it's what i had planned but you know it doesn't always happen like that i know some people that haven't gotten to go anywhere uh I've gotten to go to places like Japan, Australia, Taiwan, Singapore, uh, this island called Guam. Um, actually, I had never been to California, and then in California, I had to do a whole swap, which uh, meant I went to another aircraft carrier, but I got to spend two weeks there. What's a whole swap? Yeah, so a whole swap is when uh, the crew from one aircraft carrier transfers to the other one, and the crew from that uh, aircraft carrier transfers to the other one. So just a whole swap, like, uh, just a, uh, yeah. uh, it's spelled H-U-L-L, whole, like for the whole of a ship, but you can also say a whole swap, like a yeah. whole swap of everybody. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, not really funny, never mind. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I mean, so going back to the question, the thing that I love about being, all I love about being in the military, definitely the money. Okay. You know, financially, it's put me in such a great place that... I would have never been able to be where I am right now okay. uh, had I not been in the military. You know, I, I would have, you know, kept struggling, making payments for to school and all that kind of stuff. Now, you know, when I get out, you know, the I'll be paid money to go to school, which is a whole different yeah. crazy being of its own. You know, my friend that just got out, you know, he gets paid $3,000 every month uh, for 36 months. So that's like over a hundred thousand dollars just to go to school and he's just loving life but that's gonna be him soon mm-hmm yeah soon enough all right so what do you hate or dislike about being in the military mmm <clears throat> what do I hate or dislike so we have this thing called duty so duty is where you stand watch pretty much for 24 hours you know somebody's gonna be in the comments saying like oh he said duty <laughs> yeah, I know. Duty. Yes. Duty, duty, duty. I hate it so much. It means I have to stay on an aircraft carrier for 24 hours. Now, it doesn't mean I'm working the whole 24 hours, but it means I can't leave. Let's say a special occasion were to arise. I mean, I could try to talk to my supervisors and get out of that, but that's oh, it barely ever happens. Um, sometimes you have watch and watches the whole 20, um, not the whole 24 hours, but within those 24 hours, you can have a watch from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. or something from like 12 to 4 and then that next day you have to work from 6 to uh, 6 p.m. you know yeah. you never know so like that kind of throws off your sleeping schedule so like duty is just like a monster something that always like bite at your feet uh. yeah for me uh, I, I just dislike how stressful it gets sometimes yeah. with you know, whether it's the work or whether it's the people that you work with, you know, the work is bearable, right? As long yeah, as yeah. and as long as you have some great people that you work with, you know, you can just, you know, be motivated and say like, you know what, let's just get through this guys, you but, know. But that doesn't happen often. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it really people always happen. butt heads, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Sorry, and I then, just had to say that. Yeah, and even when you argue, like when you're out in the civilian world, right? If you're late for a job, right, you could potentially get fired and you're sent home and, you know, it's, and then you're done with. But in here, that's not the case. If, if you're late all the Stop. time, uh, if you cause trouble all the time. I mean, we have this thing called counseling chits um, where it's supposed to set you straight in some way. But in my opinion, it's not that effective. And, you know, it doesn't really matter how many counseling chits you get. Uh, yeah. The problem is still there. 